Hey guys, I don't normally do unboxing videos, but this kind of feels like Christmas, so I'm really excited about this. I touched on this in the design webinar series. If you haven't seen those four videos all about the design of this house that I'm building behind me with my parents and Grace when she gets time, then please do check that out. But in the uh, HVAC, the engines uh, webinar, which is part three of that series, I talked about the instantaneous water heaters. The word instantaneous is bandied about a lot. Most people think they mean instantaneous when they say tankless, but if you know your stuff, then you know that just because something is tankless water heater, meaning it's on demand, it does not mean it's instantaneous. It has to travel through pipes to get to the bathroom where now you're going to use it. These are truly instantaneous. They are going to be located immediately at the faucet where we turn it on. So what we have here is five uh, point of use water heaters. They are going to be installed in the bathrooms in the kitchen where we're going to be using them. And I just wanted to do a quick unboxing because these are, are very cool pieces of equipment. This is not necessarily the best way to do whatever it is. Every house is different. Every person is different. Every family is different. But this kind of technology is used a lot in Europe and in Asia and hardly anybody uses it in the States. And we want to know why. So we're going to go ahead and be the guinea pigs and we're going to install this stuff and share with you what our experience is. One of the things that that's going to enable us to do is to run one pipe around our house. We are going to cut the plumbing runs in half. I'm going to start with the smallest one, but just to explain what I mean, uh, the normal plumbing setup would be that you'd have uh, cold water coming into the house, and at that point it would split. You'd have the cold water line going off and feeding each bathroom, each faucet, each sink, shower, etc. And then you'd have another line running to a water heater that then warms it up, and then you'd have a hot water line running everywhere. We're going to just bring in the cold water, make sure it's at the right pressure, and then run that throughout the entire house, one water pipe and it will run into each bathroom, and then we can warm it up at the point, which is kind of an interesting thing to do. So what I'm opening now is the smallest of all of them. This is called the Instant Flow Micro Water Heater. Uh, what you see here is the in and then the out, which is where the hot water comes out. This has a microprocessor in it that is sensing the flow 100 times a second, and it's adjusting. When you up the flow, it increases its capacity because now it needs to heat more water when you back it off likewise. So it's going to really keep track of how much water you need and how much water you need heated. Now, normal water heaters are going to heat up the water to 120 degrees. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. There's health codes that have to do with Legionnaire's disease. Legionella is a uh, bug, a kind of microbe that gets into water that's kind of warmish and it can hang out in there and form and flourish and then not be good for people. If you actually have ever felt 120 degree water on your skin, you know that you never want to take a shower or a bath or wash your hands anywhere near 120 degrees. 120 degrees is ridiculous. What you actually need is like 105 degrees tops. That is really, really hot. If you've ever been in a hot tub, very unlikely that it's going to be over 105 degrees. That would start to scald you. So there are weird codes in place because a lot of people are installing tank water heaters, which have to be kept at 120 because by the time it gets to your bathroom, there's no way it's going to be at 120. It's going to lose a ton of its heat on the way to you because that's a very inefficient system. This is a very elegant system, and so you would never want it to heat to 120. Now, electric-wise, electric resistance heating is what we are doing here. All of this equipment uses that. I have heat pumps installed in the house, which are a more elegant way to heat things because they move heat from one place to another. But in order to get really fast response, you got to use electric resistance heat. Um, that is not the most efficient way to heat if you're connected to a grid. Because of course they have to make three times as much electricity at the plant to give you what you need. So you're paying for all of that. That efficiency conversation is not really part of the conversation that we have on this channel because it's just not as big a deal as control. So to me, partly because we have worked with renewable energy before, we have a solar system that's on the tiny lab, and I may have one on the big house, I have not decided yet. Um, it's not really part of the plans because we're dealing with much bigger fish right now. This thing does take 30 amps 
of electricity. So I have to wire up a 30 amp circuit just for this machine. That being said, the amount of time that I'm actually going to use this is minimal. And so uh, this one is going to be installed, for example, in the powder room. Now what this unit is going to deliver for us performance wise is a 50 degree, roughly, temperature rise at half a gallon per minute. If I deliver instead, uh, and it's in the documentation here, if I deliver one gallon a minute, I will get a 25 degree temperature rise. If the water is coming in at, let's say, 60 degrees, just to pick a nice round number, which would probably be about likely, 55 to 60 degrees most places, then a 50 degree temperature rise will give us 110 degrees. That's hotter than I would ever need it. So that's a pretty hot hand wash, and I can dial that down, obviously. Basically, you want to be able to tune this machine to the delivery mechanism that you're going to be using, which is the actual faucet, the actual valve. And the only other thing that comes in this box is the fittings uh, that have little filters built in just to protect the equipment, probably. Um, this thing is self-cleaning, by the way, which is nice, so we won't have built up of minerals uh, over time. Next. All right. Now this is the one for the master bathroom and laundry room. So it's going to handle a lot of flow, potentially. It's unlikely that we're going to be doing those at the same time because we can be cognizant of that. This is the Chronomite ER120-240-28800. It's a three module heater. That means it's got three heating elements inside of this that it's going to run through. It's going to take 120 amps to run this thing. So yeah, this is some serious firepower. Now that being said, I'm not going to have to add up my 120 amps to my 30 amps to my XYZ with all the rest of these because we've got five total heaters. No one is going to be running all these heaters at the same time. And I know that because this is my house and I'm building this for my family. I'm not selling this to someone else. Uh, so yes, this is an experiment and I am going to be installing electricity for my house and for my workshop, we're gonna be in the range of between 300 and 500 amp service for this house. That's not unusual if you've got a 1500 square foot workshop like we do. There are gonna be three circuits dedicated to this. This is gonna handle, like I said, the washing machine, the master bath, the master shower, the master sinks. And again, it's gonna be installed in the actual bathroom, which is bordering the laundry room. And stay tuned in the series for the rest of the kind of tour of the framing of that space. Now, the one thing here that I'll point out is this. Is your dial for making it hotter or cooler? I love that because I don't have to worry about trying to read through a manual or messing with the electronics inside of this thing. They gave it to you right on the face of it. You can make it warmer, you can make it cooler based on your preference. And last but not least, these three are roughly identical to each other. So I'm just going to show you one of them. This is the Chronomite Mighty Might. This one's bigger than the Micro, and obviously not anywhere near as big as this big guy, which is going to have to handle the laundry room as well. It's going to run on 240 volts as well. Uh, it runs almost 14,000 watts at full power. And this one also has the temperature dial right here on the side, which I love. Now, you can tell with how simple these machines are that one of the features of this is how easy it is to install. You literally put this on the wall and you put the cold in and you bring the hot out. Now these are going to activate down at 0.35 gallons per minute, a third of a gallon per minute, which is pretty low flow. Uh, that's about as low as you're going to get with any tankless or point of use water heater, which is great because sometimes I don't want to use full blast uh, hot water. Now, one of the other things about these is they do not need a pressure temperature relief valve, which is something that you'll see a lot on normal tank water heaters. But all in all, I'm very excited about running this experiment and sharing it with you because there must be something that people on other continents don't tell us about why these things are so in use over there and why we're just not seeing them a lot. My thanks to the YouTube viewer who commented on one of our water heater videos that we should seriously look into point of use. So I was happy when I reached out to Chronomite that they wanted to partner with us on this build. And uh, I look forward to installing these and showing you how they actually work. We'll of course be running testing on the temperatures that come out. In general, we're talking about like, let's aim for under a minute, we'll get 105 degrees. These, we're not going to have to worry about that. So I'll show you the results. If you stay tuned to the series, make sure that you watch the other videos as we keep building this monster behind me. And uh, comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time.